This, ladies and gentlemen, is an historic moment. Never before has there been a gathering of this magnitude to support men's and boys' issues. What you'll hear is that we hate women, that it's a backlash against women's rights. You'll hear that we're regressives that want women back in the kitchen and, and making sandwiches and, and barefoot and pregnant. It's the men's rights movement, a toxic distillation of the worst aspects of American sexism. Because we've been focusing our binoculars on the issue of discrimination against women. Most of the discrimination is faced by men. All these forms of discrimination are happening in a society that doesn't even allow us to talk about them. We I'm, I think I agree with everything you said, but there's, there's still some kind of unsettling doubt, and I don't know where that's coming from. Yes, women are still oppressed, culturally, politically, socially, economically. White men are starting to feel misplaced because women are sharing space. I am a man. And I need feminism. <laughs> Is the men's rights movement really the gender version of the white nationalist movement? They would live in more of a patriarchy now than we ever did. As I see it, the only real imbalance is in the belief system. Teach men not to rape. Only men can stop rape. Men commit domestic violence. We need to stop violence against women instead of just stopping violence. That is feminist training. We have a big hole in the area of compassion for boys and men. Instead of debating us, they try to shut anything we do down. We can't solve any of these problems if we're not allowed to even stand up and say they exist. And there's something sinister. There's some sinister aspect of our culture, something sick, something malignant, something horrifically destructive. I think it's inherently antagonistic, so the reason security guards are here, I think that's entirely warranted. The red pill is about looking at these issues in an honest way, even when it's uncomfortable. Hi everybody, this is just going to be a very, very quick, off-the-cuff, unrehearsed um, pitch. <laughs> Um, I have been invited yet again by Cassie J, um, to attend the New York, uh, city, uh, screening, uh, premiere, world premiere of the Red Pill, and, uh, in order that I would be able to participate in the question and answer sessions that she's planning to hold, um, after certain screenings on the 7th, 8th, and 9th of October. And, um, uh, I had initially declined all of her previous invitations, um, Essentially, I was just like, well, I, I'm not going to go to New York just to see a movie. Um, we're going to have a screening here in Edmonton, and I can see it there. But um, given the fact that she really wants me there for these question and answer sessions, um, and she has stressed over and over again that she uh, thinks that I can help her uh, her event be a success, Um particularly in terms of media coverage and stuff like that, uh, I have decided that I'm going to try to get my ass to New York and help her out with this Ooh, sneezing fit. Um, anyhow, uh, if you guys all want a little bit of background on this particular documentary, I suggest you go to Feed the Badger and read my quick and dirty explanation of how Cassie stumbled across the men's movement, um, how her journey through uh, making this particular project and um, some of the trials and tribulations that she suffered along the way, such as losing all of her financial backing when she told uh, certain uh, donors and, and backers that she was not going to, essentially not going to do a hit piece on the MRM. So um, I would suggest that you guys all go and read that. Um, this is the primary reason why I'm asking uh, for all of you guys to pitch in and help get me to New York City. Cassie cannot afford it. Um, she barely scraped together enough to get uh, theaters, secure theater space in New York and LA, which she had to do in order to qualify for an Oscar nomination. And so essentially, uh, she's 
uh, she's spent all of her money and a huge amount of time and effort getting this project done. And she does not have the funds to uh, pay to fly any of us out. So that's where we need your help. And um, I know that some of you are thinking maybe this movie will be a hit piece or maybe it won't be very, very friendly to us. Um, my uh, intuition on this, and I no, I can't say 100% for sure, but my intuition on this is that it's at least going to be fair and reasonable. And um, that it's not going to be like another GQ article by that pustule, uh, I can't even remember his frickin' name, um, who was, uh, who, who posted photos of Paul Elam and, and, uh, Sage Gerard that had been photoshopped to make them look like, uh, something out of Deliverance and photoshopped Chris, a picture of Crystal Garcia to make her look like a crack whore. So, I mean, it's, I don't think it's going to be anything like that. It's going to be something that, is different from what we normally see in the media. So, um, I'm asking you guys for help, uh, to get me out there and also to get Allison and Jonathan out there so that they can, so Allison can participate as well, but also so that they can film some of this stuff, sit down and do an interview, a recorded interview with Cassie J, things like that. And I am at this point, and for the first time ever, going to ask you guys a favor. Um, and this is something that you don't have to do. It's it's not going to um, it's not going to prevent me from going on this trip. But my fiance has been with me uh, every step of the way since I started doing this. He has actually he was one of the primary reasons that I did get back into discussing these issues online. And uh, he's the reason I started a blog. He's the reason I kept up with it. He's He was the one who pushed me to come out on camera. Um, he did this at considerable risk to someone who was, at the time, just building his career and who, if associated with these issues or someone like me, could have had all kinds of things happen to put the kibosh on that. So um, more than that, every time I go on one of these trips, uh, he's at home here, he's holding down the fort, uh, putting up with my kids, who he puts up with to, to a, a, an impossible degree, um, and, uh, and missing me. And, uh, and he's willing to do this without complaint. He's willing to do that uh, for this. And... Uh, He's willing to support me financially so that I can do this. Um, and really without him, and I'm going to get just fucking emotional, but without him, uh, like the Feed the Badger post says, I really would just be an opinionated waitress. I would not be um, someone who can get out there and and talk to people and get the message out and things like that. So... Um, I owe so much of this to him and, uh, and I'd really like him to be able to come on this one trip with me. Um, so, God damn it! got something in my eye there. I think it's called an emotion. So anything that you guys want to, uh, throw my way or, and Allison's way, um, is going to be very, very much appreciated, and we will both do our level best to represent the issues of men and boys during those Q&A sessions uh, in front of media cameras and really try and represent um, what we are about as opposed to what the mainstream seems to think we're about. So thanks for listening. Thanks for putting up with me, and um, I promise I will have a real video out within the next day or two. So, thanks everybody.